Recording in progress. Progress. Okay, so finally, here we are situated. Finally. Finally. <laughs> Sorry about all that drama. Technical difficulties. Yes. So how are you doing today? I am well. How are you? I'm okay. Ages. I've it's been ages since I've I don't know if I've ever spoken to you. <laughs> No, I was actually trying to think today if we had ever actually been around each other. And I don't well, we think- We played that uh, New Year's Eve party in Chicago. Mm -hmm. No. Back in 1990. No, that wasn't me. Wasn't that <laughs> us, you and me in the way? Wasn't that all of us? I don't, was it Cleveland? No, it was Chicago. Mm. You were the one who told me we'd done, well done that show together. No, I think it was, I think it was a show in Cleveland because they had, was it? The Fantasy? Was, uh, yeah, someplace like that. And they had the backstage area in a separate club. Okay. And I think Autumn was there also. Okay. Yeah, because I think it was, I think it was uh, at the Fantasy. And then what was the name of that little place? The Symposium, maybe? It was a couple doors down. It was where they had the bands hanging out. Mm. But I couldn't remember I know I know I didn't talk to you right why I don't know okay. I was okay. probably being shy but um socially we were busy we were working we were working and plus I'm always kind of like a little like I'm here to do a job and I'm freaked out so I need to like Same. not talk to anybody <laughs> but yeah. you know I, that's gotten worse through the years. I used to be a lot more social than I am now, but uh, you know, good thing I work from home. Yeah. How has it been working from home? You know what? I've been working from home actually since right before my son was born. So it'll be almost 11 years. Holy cow. So this like whole COVID thing really didn't affect me except for that my kid was at home for part of it with school. Oh, right. And Mike was at home for part of it working. Right. But besides that, like nothing has changed. So that's why I say, like, I used to be a lot more social than I am now. So I was just telling Mike earlier today, like, you know, when you have to go into an office all the time, you kind of by default are social, right. relatively speaking. And I've gotten to the point now, like, if I had to go back into an office, it would just be like culture shock and whatever. But anyway. You're I a hermit. Yeah, I digress. I, I mean, I mean <laughs> yeah, I mean, we are, we've always sort of been hermits anyways, which is probably another reason why we didn't talk <laughs> 20,000 years ago, just because, yeah. you know, just like, we're like socially awkward people, I guess. I don't know. But you've always been there. <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing I was thinking about because like, I feel like it's weird that we never ran in tighter circles because we were, you guys were out touring and we were kind of out touring like semi around the same, you know, around the same time, same clubs, whatever. And it's like, it's so weird how certain bands we were always with and then like never really ran into you back then in the day. Right. right. Yeah, well, I think, you know, we were a little heavier and yeah. more guitar -based, Different, so. yeah, different. Yeah. Still, it's weird. And like, you were already like super, I mean, I knew who you were before I was ever in a band. So, you know, like you were already famous. So I was probably <laughs> shy around you anyway, but. Nonsense. You guys were famous than we were. <laughs> well, I am not me. Mike did. Mike does everything. I was right. just kind of like, I don't know, whatever, <laughs> whatever, along for the ride. I don't know. Not did say, yeah, I mean that's how I felt, but it's hard to say that when you're the front person, I guess. So, so you felt like that too, like you were just kind of along for the ride. Um, no, I mean I definitely had a hand in doing everything, but. You know, I, I like to celebrate who I'm working with. And so my focus is on them, even if other people's focus is on me. So, See, uh, I, you know, when I play, when I play out and when I play live, when I rehearse, it's like, it's, 
I mean, the only people I care about are who are with me. So, cause they're the only ones who knows if I'm messing up. So that's true. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, I, by the, by, by the time people start knowing, they start knowing if you're messing up, but you know. So do you have that, um, sort of like imposter syndrome thing? Cause I, like, I, like I downplay, I mean, I sit there and I say, oh, it's just a long for the ride. I put work in, I'm not, it's hard for me to say like, I have I've accomplished anything or whatever. So I'm like wondering if that's maybe part of, I think a lot of people have that thing about yeah. them. Yeah, like imposter syndrome. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it's, uh... I get that more in, in, you know, like my regular job and stuff like that. Not so much in music, yeah. Because, you know, because I put so much into the lyrics, it really yeah. is me and stuff like that. So, yeah. And how I feel, so, but yeah, not so much in the music for me anyway. Yeah. I just feel like I'm fooling everybody all the time in every area of my life. <laughs> so, I don't Welcome know. to adulting. Yeah, it's a mess. It's kind of a mess. Like, I was just, you know, I, I, I get, I, I try to look at my motivations a lot. Like, why do I feel this way? Why do I do this? Blah, blah, blah. And it just kind of all just comes down to like a walking failure of like, I, I have these expectations that are impossible for me to ever achieve. And so anyway, it's, it's the issue, but anxiety and perfectionism. Yeah. But it sucks like being a horrible perfectionist. It does. But, like you think if you're you go right into you get right you go straight to paralysis you know yeah like you would think that if you're a perfectionist you'd at least get something right <laughs> lots of people think you do i don't i guess whatever anyway i i this i, I don't I, this shouldn't be like therapy for me so um <laughs> sorry this is a hot mess <laughs> No, we're just, we're just chatting. It's cool. Yeah. So what's going on? Like, what do you want to talk about? What are we talking about? What do you, we're, we're working on music, right? You put out a song, right? Yeah. Well, uh, technically that was my band, but I had nothing to do with it. You had <laughs> like, nothing I, to do with it? No, no, that was um, Mike and John Fair was completely the two of them, you know, technically my band. And then uh, Stark Corner just came out on vinyl, but again, that had, you know, I wasn't doing it. Yeah. <laughs> well, since I release all my own stuff, I have everything to do with what I, what I put yeah, out. Right. So. Exactly, exactly. So, like, what do you have going on? Um, currently, we're, well, it's the two-year anniversary of my solo album, which I had a lot of help with, so many people. And um, so I'm doing a special on that. I'm... Uh, working on i'm working on a cover song right now for a compilation that's coming up doing that tonight oh that's and cool then um yeah and then it's time to get to work on a new release so that'll be cool living in my sweet church that's cool <laughs> where do you live i don't even i don't think i even know where you live i i was living in san francisco and then in 2020 right after the pandemic i uh I moved back to New Jersey, where I'm from, okay. mostly, and I bought this sweet church. That's rad. It is rad. It's so it's a legit there. church. Totally a church. That's cool. The acoustics in there good? Uh, there's a little slap back. I got to work on that. I need to put some uh, treatments in. Slowly but surely, it's coming along. I had some really donations. Cool. I had some fine donations to the church. I had... Uh, uh, Danny, the drummer from The Wake, brought me this sweet drum kit right here. That's that, super cool. That's, that rocks. I got all my little stuff over here. I'm rehearsing and doing things. And then over here by the light, yeah. my, my recording setup. Right on. And uh, there's a choir loft. And I got a couch and a TV over there. And uh, That is yeah. seriously cool. Sweet setup. There's a the choir so loft. There's oh wow! <laughs> That's the awesome. Altars, the altars over there. That's the that is one. seriously cool, dude. Yeah, it's uh, it was 
cost effective. People are like, you go to church. I was like, it's on, it was on sale. Um, <laughs> girls love sale. No, that's really, like, I love that. Yeah, but for the price of a like new SUV. Oh, right on. So. I always think how it would be really cool. Like, you know, you see a lot of abandoned stores and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Abandoned warehouses. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been a Kmart empty here for like, you know, a million years. Oh, great oh with my that God, point. can you imagine being able to buy like a Kmart? Yeah, that would be epic. Yeah, <laughs> you could just roller skate cool. around in it all day. <laughs> That's always where my brain goes. I'm like, you could just roller skate. Roller skate, exactly. Yeah, that's and I'm our, like, that's our that's our generation speaking. Yeah, for right. real. I'm like, I could twirl my baton in there. I could, I could do all this crazy stuff. You could have a whole club set up. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's how it started. I started looking for like a warehouse space. Yeah. And uh, turned out that churches were going really cheap. So that's kind of crazy. Like, I was like, you know, extra golf points. It's a church. So, and the, uh, and the stained glass in the morning. Oh man. It's really, it's really beautiful. Yeah. It's hard to tell. First of all, I don't have glasses my glasses on, so I can't see. So I'm like, yeah. I couldn't tell if that was art or, you know, I knew it looked cool. Yeah, that, No, those are stained glass windows. That is awesome. So do you ever, this is a weird question, but I always associate sort of like religion and churches and stuff with like, you know, ghosts and weird vibes or whatever so do you have any I, like get any weird kind of vibes going on in there at all fortunately not yet yeah. no yeah not yet so good juju then yeah <laughs> actually i'm just about to this this choir loft that's up here it has two staircases that go up to the top over there and yeah. they have their amazing echo chambers so I'm ready to like, I've got like a couple of mics and a couple of mic stands. I'm ready to check that out because it's really cool. That is so cool. Yeah. And so is it just kind of that main area or are there other rooms part of it too? And like, no, I looked at a couple, there was a couple for sale when I was looking and I looked at a couple that like had classrooms in the back, which would have been ideal. Totally. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, the one I was looking at, I actually had a bid in on it. And uh, it had mold in the basement, so I couldn't I couldn't get it because it would have been too expensive to fix. So yeah. I ended up with this one. This one does not have a basement or anything, but it has another building. So there's oh, a social. Cool. Yeah, that's where the the kitchen is. It's like right next door. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's a whole other. It's like this really long hall. It's got this wood paneling. It's really cool. And um, yeah, so lots of room over there. That is so cool. Like I I that's perfect. It's it's funny too because like legit the other day we drove by this church and my son goes, wouldn't it be cool to live in a church? And I'm like, yeah, of course, you know, or a warehouse or whatever. Be, it yeah. Be. yeah. Like now I can tell him I know someone that actually lives in one. Yeah. And now that I have one, like people who own churches like contact me and they're like, oh, you own a church? I own a church too, you know. And there's a couple of them. There's one guy uh, over here in Northeast Pennsylvania who, this is like 80 miles from me and he bought a church. He doesn't live in it, but he's turning it into like a community center music thing. Mm. He's, he's like in a punk rock band. It's pretty cool. And then there's another couple over in England who have a church and yeah, there's a couple. That's cool. Yeah. Good. But That's yeah, I mean, just have the open space is after living yeah. in San Francisco in a closet for like six years. It's right. really nice to just crank up the amps and just play. Have space <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. That that's that's seriously cool. Um, no, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna walk you over to my my recording setup. Yeah, cool. I have to unplug the computer. Take a look. And by, oh, dark. Oh. Okay, so there's the altar behind me. That is cool. I keep saying cool. Yeah. That looks cool. Yeah. A little couch would fit in there. <laughs> it would, but I've got a couch in the TV. Yeah. Right on. And let's see. I'm, I'm working on a wall over here. Got the studs up. That's good. And longer. Right on. 
That's super. Yeah, that's cool. It's nice that you can have that all right in the same room. I know. Just walk over here and then I walk over to the other desk. And... Yeah, that's rad. Good morning. Dressing up for some shows in July. July, I'm playing a show in Leeds. It's the Leeds Goth City Festival. Oh, right on. And that's the first time I'm going to play in England for a long time. I haven't played in England for... I played Whitby in 97 and 98. Yeah. Yeah, it's a long time ago. It's a while ago. It's scary oh, last time. as it goes. Played there. That's the tour. <laughs> That's the tour. <laughs> That's cool. It is sweet. Drum kit. We got some tears. Sweet. But yeah. Super fun. That is cool. Pretty fun. So you're going to England. Are you going to be doing any other shows while you're over there or just? Yeah, I'm talking to someone in London right now about adding a show and, uh, got some other emails out we'll see right on who's got what available yeah that's cool i we haven't played any shows in a long time i was gonna ask you yeah we haven't i think the last one we did was what was it 2007 i think or either 2007 or 2009 but, but prior to that it was like 1998 really yeah hmm you know, it's just like, it's life. <laughs> you know, you know Mike, Mike uh, got, he was diagnosed with type one diabetes and that threw like a massive wrench into things. Oh yeah. Um, you know, we had to get jobs because you couldn't get health insurance at the time, right. blah, 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 blah. And then it just kind of, everything sort of, it didn't become a priority anymore. So, yeah, of course, you know, uh, we did some, let's see, we did some sunshine blind reunion shows in 2013 and 2015. I think it was, we did, we played convergence and, uh, that was like, I was like, yeah, this is the beginning of something. And that was totally the end of something because nobody else wanted to play. It was all just, um, you know, the last hurrah instead of the first hurrah. So Aww, I fun. know. So I had to go find other people to play with. So, yeah. so I did. It's hard. I, you know, like we, every once in a while we go through this thing where like, oh, we gotta, we gotta play live again. We gotta play live again. And then just the logistics of it, like. Yeah, it's really hard to start again after you've stopped. I mean, yeah. once you're going, I mean, adding a show anywhere is easy because you've got all the stuff. You're ready to you're go. Rehearsed, you're ready to go. You got your material, you've got everything. Yeah. But if you're trying to start up from, you know, a couple years off, it's really, really yeah. difficult. Well, and people live all over the place and like, you know, nobody else in the band wants to play shows. So then it's like, okay, well you could hire people, but then, you know, like the logistics of finding the right people and then finding the time to practice. And then everybody's got their, at this age, everyone's got their like health stuff and <laughs> it's true. It's just too hard. And so then we're like, okay, well, we'll just strip it back and we'll just do acoustic. It'll be a guitar and two microphones and that's all it'll be. And like, that's a good, that's a good idea. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that. And then you start practicing it and it's fine and everything. Mike has two torn rotator cuffs in his shoulders. Oh no. Yeah. So he tore one and then it's been almost two years now and it's still messed up. Oh no. So he tore the one and then the other is not technically torn. It's just kind of like it's on its way. And then it and, won't heal because of the diabetes, I assume. Well, that, and just like the, the therapist is like, he goes, I hate to tell you this, but most adults get this to some degree and like, it doesn't usually really go away. Like it, it, it can get better, but then you're constantly re-injuring it because you sleep on it weird or you pick something up funny and 
so he was almost he was still sore but like almost well and then like about shoot it's probably been like two months now he moved his arm weird and it's torn again and so like he's back to struggling to even get through a song because with that pain it's like oh that sucks oh, yeah so then at that point you're just kind of like maybe it's just like not in the cards to do that <laughs> you know yeah well I really enjoy just sitting in the studio and writing stuff so yeah right and you're That's... in control of it and you don't have to worry about bad sound and right drama I do, I do like working with other people but yeah I'm getting over it yeah it's <laughs> easy to, I mean it, it's easy to work with people now ever than it ever has been but not in person so much right no my entire album was done remotely the nearest yeah. people were 400 miles away you know it's like yeah I mean, I started with, I started working with Rich from the wake. He was in Ohio and I was in San Francisco. That's 2000 miles. And yeah, then yeah. Uh, I got uh, people in LA, people in North Carolina, people in England, and then the guys in Scotland mixed it and mastered it. And so, yeah, I did, there wasn't anybody in San Francisco I was working with. <laughs> I think that's so awesome though, because it opens up the possibilities like huge to like, you know, I've gotten to collaborate with people. I'm like, I never would have Yes, I've gotten to collaborate with that. So, yeah, because um, I just had these remixes done by Ben Christo, who plays guitar for the Sisters of Mercy, and uh, Mark Jim and I wait. He who's played with everybody from the Mission to Gary Newman to Lords of Acid to everything, and they're there. I mean, they're in L.A. and England and all over the place. So yeah, it's really a great time for that. And during the lockdown, especially for people who are, um, you know, whose job was to play live for other people. Yeah they didn't have any work so they were happy to do remixes so I you know Andy Black Sugar from KMFDM did a remix for me it was like this is the perfect time and it was perfect because if you're not playing live you're not networking and meeting those other bands that you would be playing with right. you know so right. to do the remix was kind of like you know replaced some of that for me and I was very happy about that yeah oh. yeah I think that I think that uh, so here's a question for you. You've been, you know, you've been in music for a long time. So do you think, do you find things are healthier now or healthier how it used to be? Like, what, what do you think about, like, as far as like, healthier for, what? <laughs> for us or for the scene yeah. or like, it's just a healthier, more supportive music environment. Like, oh, because like for us, I find that the scene is much more open now than it was back in the day where, I mean, I don't know how you got treated, but you know, we mm. were like the weird redheaded stepchild, so to speak, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. But I hear that a lot from people in different States and stuff. I mean, the New York, New York city scene was very, I thought it was very inclusive, very supportive. And you know, we all New York was always good to us. Yeah, New York was always like, you know, hey, we're all in these bands, let's play a show together, right. you know, so I didn't yeah. think we were, but I heard from every other band from everywhere else that it, that was not the way it was. And then when I moved away, I was like, why the hell did I leave New York City? <laughs> this place <Yeah>. sucks. <laughs> so um, I'm glad yeah. to be back. I, I think like, and I think people cared more too back in the day, like you had to look a certain way and you had to present this image a certain way. And if you didn't, then it was like, you know, whatever. And I feel like now it's like, you can, it, it's really kind of more about the music now than it used to be like a little bit less about image. I don't know. Maybe. I mean, you, you get that gatekeeping in any, in any scene, <laughs> like you have to look this way. Yeah. Or, you know, why aren't you wearing black? <laughs> why are you wearing blue jeans you know whatever yeah. so um yeah I and we went through a bunch of phases with the looks and uh it's fun um yeah. maybe you didn't experience that because you, maybe you were like more like you more established or something I don't know might have been different maybe it was different for I you. think yeah I hope so because if it had been any rougher than it was and it wasn't I didn't think it was that rough, but if it had been any rougher than it was, I might've, I might've not continued, you know, like if I got a lot of abuse and, you know, you're the, uh, step, you know, black sheep, stepchild, you know, we don't want you, whatever, 
your voice sucks or whatever, I probably wouldn't have continued. So I'm lucky I got good feedback and supportive yeah. people around me. Yeah, I think it was just kind of weird because, you know, like the goth, the whole goth thing, like we didn't really fit to that. And, but that was where we were being pushed. Right. And so like a lot of times we'd show up places and it was like, who's the dude in the, you know, like, why are, like, who are you? And then people would be like, oh crap, that's the band. Like, I mean, this happened a lot. <laughs> yeah. Obviously it happened a lot to, for me to even bring it up, but I just All think right. like now, like, like for instance, you have a band like Soft Kill who are huge and they make this beautiful music that like, you know, is goth friendly, like people in the scene love it. But yet yeah. you look at them and they're like hoodies and, you know, they don't look like what they're supposed to look like. And I know they get crap too, because I've talked to Tobias about it before, but, you know, I just, I feel like people are less gatekeepy and, and yeah. about it now than back in the day, maybe. Yeah, no, I definitely felt that pressure back in the day. And, you know, maybe it's formed my opinion that if you show up in a hoodie, then why aren't you dressed? <laughs> why aren't you dressed appropriately? But I mean, that's appropriate for now. We're just old, right? So <laughs> yeah. I would, you know, rather not see somebody in a hoodie, but whatever. Okay. So we do, we, we're yeah, definitely, yeah. 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 But I mean, it's all about the music for me and it's yeah. probably about the music for you too. So yeah, whatever so. with the fashion, but uh, it's fun. I like to do it, but for, for me, it was like dependent on the day. Sometimes I was wearing hoodies and Adidas pants and other days I was wearing like some weird floral gown thing, whatever. Well, I was always in black velvet or something. So maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe I was appropriate for the time. I guess. Yeah. So we probably just had different experiences Yeah. for that part of it. But like, what about in terms of, um, do you like how music now like it's more accessible to everybody like you know back then you had to have a record label you had to you know you kind of had to work to work the same game that major labels worked except to a lesser degree obviously and uh, now you know you could be your own producer you can record your own music you can have a hundred percent control over all of it, which is awesome, obviously, but then also there's drawbacks to it and that somebody else isn't promoting you necessarily. So they're, you know, which do you think you prefer? Like, do you prefer how it is now where you have complete control and, and, and over the whole thing? Or did you like sort of having that label support and, and that era of it? <clears throat> I mean, anybody who, plays music probably just wants to play music and not you know manage a freaking right. tour or album release or do any of the business side of it that's not what we're in it for we would just want to make we just want to play music man right but um but that being said that was mostly what i did in those days so i mean i booked all the tours and i did all the you know mail outs and the, you know all that stuff so i'm comfortable doing that mm. and uh when we did get on a label you know, it was nice to not have to do that. And I could just concentrate on the music, but um, yeah. So now that I have to do it again, it's, it's, you know, it's not, it's not something I don't know. So yeah. I would prefer not to have to do it, of course, but, um, but on the other hand, you do get, you know, having control of it, you do get, you know, your vision without compromise. So that's, right. that's the give and take of it. So. Yeah. I think that, I mean, I, I like, I, we work with record labels, so I'm not anti record label, obviously. I right. just wonder like if you were like, a, you know, if you're a young band coming up now compared to how it was back then, you know, you could just do it all yourself and not have to ever <laughs> rely on anybody, which is kind of nice back then. You, I mean, you could do that, but it wasn't mm -hmm. easy. Obviously no. you can't just upload your music to like Bandcamp and everybody can just download it. Like you had to have product, you know, so. Yeah, <laughs> you had to make tapes and you had to mail them out by hand and right. you had to go talk to all the DJs and you had to do all that stuff. It's true. 
So it's mm-hmm. like sometimes I think like, man, people have it like they kind of have it easy now in that regard. But by the same token, it's probably there's so many voices out there that you it probably right. get, everybody gets drowned out to a degree also. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you for it, the playing ground was even for a while in the beginning of the Internet, but yeah. now slowly but surely it's, you know, it's being locked down again by the major labels and yeah being drowned out again but i don't know i'm sure something else will come along <laughs> so right i think it's like, cool again. like it's all, t- it's all timing it's all timing it is like you have to be in the right place at the right time still i think you know like social media is such a strange thing because you know anybody anywhere can get famous at the drop of a hat just by luck you, yeah. you know so it's such a weird thing to navigate for people i'm sure it is weird and it moves much quicker now too with the tiktok and all that stuff so yeah who knows where to put your thing you know right well yeah and and even just getting your foot in the door to get people to even find you is it's not easy i'm glad that we don't have to rely on it like it's it's already established enough to like be its own beast at this point right yeah no me too yeah it's kind of nice not to have to play the game so much i guess yeah yeah i have friends who are trying to start out now and i mean there's a million of them for sure i mean i guess there was a million when we started to i don't know i guess guess, depending on how motivated you are to get your stuff out there you'll get it out and that if you're motivated enough and you have the right timing that's what happens preparedness yeah. versus opportunity meets opportunity and there you go so yeah and probably i mean the key to it probably is still just getting out and playing shows you know if you really want to get anywhere as, as like a young band yeah that way people like because where how are you going to randomly just get yourself out on the internet i don't know it's confusing <laughs> i'm glad i don't have to deal i'm glad i yeah. don't have to do it and it's a lot of repetition and, you know, you're keeping your presence on, you know, all the time. It's like, you've got to post every 24 hours or something. Just yeah. keep, keep yourself in front of their eyeballs all the time, all the time, all the time. And it's like, you know, people, you, you think you've put it out a million times, but no matter how many times you put it out, somebody's seeing it for the first time. So yeah, you just, have, you just have to keep doing it. And it's kind of exhausting because, especially if you're like awkward. Yeah. <laughs> And then you do an interview and people are like, so how did you start the band? <laughs> and you're like, 20 years ago, thank you. <laughs> I don't you hate that question. Yes. It's like, like you can bio. Google that shit. Like the answer's out there already. <laughs> Google yeah. it. Actually, it's interesting now when I've noticed like when you put out like a press bio or something, you know, like a, you're pushing a single or something and you send out, you write up the thing and you send it out to the magazine and and then, you know, you, they're like, oh, the article's out and you read it and it's pretty much like exactly what you wrote. <laughs> it's like, yeah. well, like, like I could have done that myself. They just like, they didn't even paraphrase. They just literally lifted the same copy and. Yeah. So, okay. So, you know, make up, I'm going to make up whatever I want about myself and I'm going to put it up there because they're just going to print it. They're not even going to read it. So. <laughs> yeah. Out of yeah. game the system. Yeah. It's kind of like, what's the point then? You could have done that yourself, really. Yeah, well, well, you did, basically. So that's the point. It's the, the point is the point is you can write whatever you want because they aren't they aren't even gonna read it. They're just gonna pass it along and then people will read it and people will read what you wrote. So that's yeah. At least it'll be truth, right? Sure. <laughs> well, if you're telling the truth, truth. according to us. <laughs> History is written by the winners. <laughs> yeah. So um, you're working on stuff. So like what, what kind of vibe, like which, what's your, what are you inspired by right now? What are you feeling? What are you? Oh, well, I've been saying that, uh, you know, when I started getting back to it, when Sunshine Blind, like really just was definitely never going to play again. I was like, okay, well, I need to uh, start gearing up and, uh, and uh, putting out some music. So I started working on music by myself and I thought I was really starting from like 
square zero because I had never done music by myself. And uh, so I just, you know, started doing some stuff, putting some little tracks up, stuff like that. And then I started asking people to help me and all these people helped me. And then I realized that I wasn't starting from zero. I was starting from like hundred because I already, you know, had three albums out and I had all these friends and I knew tons of people who were excellent musicians. So I was not starting from zero at all, but um, at the time I, I thought I did. And so I was just kind of doing this little acoustic thing and I was like, okay, well, we're gonna, I'm gonna have some people play on my acoustic thing. And they sent me, you know, 60 tracks of electric guitars back. And I was like, okay, this is, this is not an acoustic thing anymore. <laughs> I was like, well, well, track. so um, you can swear. Yeah, it's fine. So, uh, so the album is, uh, is kind of a mix. It's an interesting mix of, you know, electric and acoustic, but it was kind of like, just like my breaking back into it, like breaking into being a solo artist at all. And um, so it was just kind of like me testing the water. So now that I am up to speed, I really feel like I just want to get back to making those barn burner kind of rock songs that we used to do. So that's what I would be focusing on next. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So that'll be fun. It'll probably feel like going home again, you know? Super fun. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. And since I never played the instruments before, it's been super fun in that way because over these many years, I've actually, I've actually, you know, taken up bass and learned to play bass and, and it's super fun. Who knew? And uh, so, and I'll be, you know, I can test out all my own guitar playing and my production skills and my mixing and, you know, all of this stuff I've learned over the last 10 years. I'm really excited to, I'm sure I'll have, you know, people help me as well, but um, yeah, this will be for sure. Like what I was aiming for when I started. And so I can just awesome. move straight into the, the uh, rock songs that I want to do. So. Right on. That's cool. Yeah. It's exciting. So do you do any other creative stuff besides music? Do you have any other artsy passions? Artsy passions? Well, you know, I, uh, <clears throat> I uh, went to school and got a degree in expressive arts therapy. And okay. I was forced, which is like a bunch of different modalities. So, you know, they made us do art and they made us do drama and they made us do poetry and they made us do dance, which is, you know, not, you know, it's out of my frame, yeah. but it was really great to, you know, get into those things and just kind of like, really just kind of like see how they can help people express what you can't normally express in your regular languages. Like music is my yeah. language. So to try, they're like, okay, so say the same thing you want to say, but say it dance instead of music. And I was like, ah. oh. <laughs> that was a lot of moshing and, you know, uh, but that was the, that was the thing, whatever, you know, and you, and you see it from a different way when you do that, when you, when you use a different, you know, if you use your left hand instead of your right hand, you see what you're trying to do right. in a different way. And that's, the, you know, the whole idea is to get a different perspective on things. So see it from a bunch of perspectives and then you understand stuff better. So um, I have not continued with any of those, but um, there are a few things I like to do. I like to sew. Um, That's and, cool. Yeah, I've always had to sew because I've always been a plus size person and that was not always catered to, especially when I was young. So I've always had to sew. And fortunately, when I went to high school, it was nice enough that they had a home ec class and they taught me to sew. So, so. Um, I do like to do that. I just got a new machine and I'm very excited to try a whole bunch of things with that. So always, that's a, that's a creative thing. I always and, wished I could sew. I just don't, I don't have the, the patience for it, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm like one of these awful people that like, if I pick something up and I kind of like instinctively can do it, I'm cool. But this is <laughs> like, like if I have to, if it's super challenging for me yeah, and I can't, I feel like it's not, I'm just going to be more frustrated by it than the joy I get out of it. I just mm -hmm. abandon it. And that's yeah. me in sewing. Like <laughs> I, can't, I could never like get like, you know, maybe if I was doing a different type of sewing, like making dolls or something like that, but like to sew clothes, hold yeah. my was a nightmare for me like I, the the cutting out of patterns it was all just too meticulous and then it had to be perfect or it looked janky so like that wasn't my thing but I think that was like you know like artsy type sewing maybe it would be different but 
So I'm like super jealous of people who sew because that's such an amazing skill. Like the fact that you can make clothes exactly how you want them. Well, <laughs> I didn't say I was good at that. just said I enjoy it. <laughs> no, that's cool. But, um, I mean, mostly I mostly I just alter stuff like I buy stuff like too, too big and then I alter it down or mm -hmm. you know or I take two things and I rip them apart and put them together and that sort of thing but um yeah I can do a whole pattern and that's it cool is, too it is fun too I, I, envy, I definitely envy that skill and I totally relate to you on the like plus size thing because I've been chubby my entire life like you know and yeah. I think that's where a lot of my insecurity comes from because that whole thing oh, is totally <laughs> yeah. i mean that's that's another thing like if people have been like hey who's that fat chick on stage i probably wouldn't have continued doing it because i was pretty sensitive about it at the well time. let me tell you the very first project festival that ever happened we played it obviously and i afterwards i'm i was walking through the crowd and somebody yelled lose weight at me and what? so what? yeah so like you know, wanted being, a knuckle sandwich. <laughs> you know, like, I would have beat the fuck out of the person if I had seen them. But, yeah, these but, days it doesn't bother me at all. But at the time we were young and yeah, that well, was the thing. Up with that all through school being picked on, you know, and then the whole relationship thing with with men, it was always like, you're not, you, you know, oh, if you'd only lose. Oh, men. hell no. <laughs> Don't even tell me that. You know what I mean? And so did not. they did not. Oh, well, not my current Mike never did that. But like in the past, like, I mean, I, this, this one guy said to me like, oh, got it. He, he was like, if you, there was this like magazine, you're going to laugh at this magazine. It was called trucking magazine. Do you remember those like hot rod magazines back in the day that would have like chicks sprawled on the covers yeah, and yeah, yeah. laying across cars and stuff. Well, and already, we were, already there, you know, where they're objectifying women, so. Right, right. And so I remember hanging out with this dude and he was like, if you looked like the girl on that cover, I'd marry you. And like, that was like, it's said as a joke, but like, no, That's but enough. that was how you're treated all the time. And so it would just like having to get on stage. It was ne like, for me, it was never about feeling like I was ever going to be good enough because of that you know what I mean and oh so yeah that's that's what held me back from getting up on the stage in the first place for so many years yeah right and it's such a ridiculous thing because I know that like 99% yes. of people really don't care they really don't care no everybody's but, too worried about about their own self about their yeah. own insecurities they don't care they don't care right Nobody cares. that's so ingrained when, when, you, when you've heard it from the time you were you know and well-meaning family members you know like oh yeah yeah my stuff, mom like, was like that. that like should you oh, yeah. maybe no my mom was the worst for that she, yeah like putting you on a diet when you're like 12 <laughs> you know what i mean like so oh, yeah, anyway yeah. Yeah, so I that's was, uh, I was anorexic for the last year of high school and uh, <sighs> didn't help when I got to college and everybody thought I'd been like that forever. And then I started gaining the weight back and people are like, what's happening? And I'm like, I'm going back to my normal size. That's what's happening. I'm not starving to death. That's what's happening. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it's such a, and, and you know, really just within the last six years, I found out I have PCOS, I have insulin resistance, metabolic, all this stuff. And so like my whole life, I blamed myself, like if I just would stop eating and it no. had nothing to do with that. It no. was set, set point weight is a thing. <laughs> Your body wants to be at exactly yeah. this point, no matter what. Yeah. yeah. So and that's a frustrating thing. And like, I don't think people get that part of performing. You know, well, I mean, you get it to a degree, but it's like you're already vulnerable up there singing your heart out or whatever you're doing, because it's like opening a page of your diary and right. making everybody read it. And then in the back of your mind, you're also thinking about that dick that yelled lose weight at you. You know right. what I mean? And you're, and everybody's standing there looking at you and how am I standing and am I holding my, you know, shoulders back and I, yeah. do I look, you know, is my chin okay? You know, and it's like, I'm trying to sing, you know? yeah it sucks 
it's crazy. It really sucks. And I don't have think- you ever, like, Have you ever like lost a lot of weight and like and be noticed how people treat you then? Yeah, I, I mean, I've never, I've never because been thin, but I lost enough weight to where, like, I still thought I looked like a fucking house. But then when I see pictures, I'm like, I wasn't even, I didn't look fat then. And people yeah. definitely, treated yeah. Treated you different. Treated yeah. you different. Yeah, there's a certain amount of invisibility that comes with being bigger that I didn't realize I was benefiting from. And uh, because I want people to leave me the fuck alone, mostly. <laughs> and when you're that skinny, uh, like I lost a lot of weight. Like I was anorexic. I lost a lot of weight and people yeah. like people would not leave you alone. It's like, it's, yeah, <laughs> it was shocking to me. It was like, I and then, you know, then it pissed me off. It's like, I, you know, there's nothing. I am the same person, right. <laughs> you know, but you do, you would not have noticed me, you know, six months ago. So right. it was really, uh, I don't know. It messes with your head for sure. It does. And then I think even like, let's say magic happened and all of a sudden I had this perfect body in my head, I'd still be that same person I was for. Exactly. And then people would treat you different and you'd be like, why, why are you treating yeah. me different? Yeah. But I don't think I would, I don't, and I don't trust it when people tell me like, Oh, you look pretty or whatever. I'm like, yeah, but like, to me, there's always a, yeah, but following it because yeah. it's, there's always been a, yeah, but <laughs> you know what I mean? And so like, yeah. I, People will say, like, oh yeah, you look pretty or whatever. And I'm like, mm, I don't trust this. I don't trust this. I don't believe I mean, it. I mean, I'm old enough now to realize that people have their own opinions. If they think I look pretty, great. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything to me, you know? So Right. That's what I'm saying though. It's like, I don't, I'm not questioning their motivation, but my brain goes, right. that's not true though. You of know. course it is. You look wonderful. <laughs> They're just noticing it. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's a whole thing. I've been in therapy for it and like I never can get to the root of it. And I'll feel, I'll get better about it for a while and I'll feel mm. like, yeah, fuck it. And then 6 months later I'm right back to the same the negative it's, talk. It's so ingrained. I don't know and I don't know where it all like it's got to be tied to something that I'm not aware of, but you know, I'll, like I, I'll be 50 in a couple of weeks from now. And I'm like, at this point, it's like, we kind of are who we are. Not that we can't improve ourselves, but obviously every day you should strive to be a better human being on some level. But like, at this point, it's like, do I really need to know the root cause of it? Or can I just go, okay, it is what it is. <laughs> you know, it's true. It's, it's hard. It's a lot to think about therapy for sure. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know. You know, what helps me is, you know, just realizing that, you know, other people don't have the same problem and they have the same circumstances. So yeah, you know, I'm on stage to sing. So yeah. <laughs> at least I can, thank God I can sing. Right. You know? Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. And, it's, it's, and the people who put other people down, I mean, it's, it's all projection, you know, it's like, it yeah, I suck because I'm on stage. What have you done? You know, it's like, yeah, that's, that's something that I'm sorry. Me. I'm sorry. You hate yourself. Go home and take it out on someone else. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's true because like, I mean, and it's with everything, you know, you, you can't, it's, we're just barrage, a nonstop barrage of negativity on everything. Like, you know, a new movie comes out, you want to read an article about it. You, you, you make the mistake of scrolling down and looking through the comments and it's just I one never read the comments being an asshole. And it's like, I just wanted to enjoy this thing that I love and like you're right. shooting all over it. And I'm and yeah. like, you said, like, what have you done? You're, you're such a great movie director. See? Where's your movies? Like, and I feel like people who actually do create things don't, yeah. don't knock other people down because you understand what goes into it and what that feels like. And then to have somebody just dismiss it, like, you know, I don't, I never, even if, if I watch or hear something or whatever, and it's not my cup of tea, yeah, it's not my cup of tea, but I'm not going to trash it because that means something to the person that created it. And just cause it's not my thing. Or the person who it. enjoys it. Yeah. And it's like, just because I don't like it doesn't mean it's bad. Right. That's just my personal taste. So yeah. 
So I'll go Why? over here and, you know, post something I do enjoy. <laughs> you know, right. it's like. But I don't need to make somebody else feel bad because they like it either, you know? Yeah, people just want to show that they're smarter than everybody else. Or, right, uh, right. Like their taste is the end all be all of what's good. And if you don't agree with it, then like somebody. Right. Well, it's very, it's very narcissistic. Like everybody should like yeah. what I like and not like what I don't like. So, right. Like, but. You know, I, you know, even if I didn't like something, I'd be like, well, I, you know, I don't like that, but I like this and, you know. Right. Not, not and like, I don't care I, that you it's like, not like it. I like that because it's bad. It's because, you know, and if you like it, then great, you know, good for you. But That's exactly how, that's exactly how I feel too. Like I try so to we, celebrate my friends when they post something that they like, you know, it's like yeah, be awesome. Supportive. Or just keep your mouth shut. Or just keep your gut <laughs> damn. <laughs> <laughs> You don't have to tell them that you think that's stupid. Like, <laughs> and like people will spell opinions like that. Like, uh, a friend of mine showed me a post that she saw where this guy is like talking about how Tool, like the band Tool is like terrible. And right. everybody knows they're just a Pink Floyd ripoff who was also terrible. And I'm like, you're stating this like it's <laughs> Like, if that's your opinion. That's not a fact. Right. <laughs> like, right. Record you know. sales would beg otherwise. Uh, there's a whole lot of people that disagree with you, sir. Sir. <laughs> it's so sir. And again, it's like, what records have you put out? How many have you sold? Like, what do you, you know, where's your gold records at? <laughs> hey, couldn't you, could you, you need some of that indignity when people, when people insult you as well. <laughs> Yeah, well, I I don't put we'll up compliment that. you, you know. I know. I tr I I really do try to say just say thank you and not like quant like not turn around and well thank you, but I really right. suck. <laughs> I try really hard not to do that, but to just say thank you. Yeah, means, I mean, when people give you a compliment, just there's no you don't need to qualify it. Just be like yeah. thank you. Thank you. And think whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it's not self bad self-talk. So I have gotten good about not letting people like, I, I don't have, I used to be super long suffering with people who were like trolly, mm. you know, cause I would try, I would try to think like, I need to work this out with this person. You know, now I'm just like, fuck off. Like, I don't need that. Like if you're going to be a dick to me, why do I have to give you my time? Just fuck off. Like, we could all just we could all just hold our energy about ourselves and not give it away yeah. to people who don't deserve it exactly. <laughs> it's such an exhausting thing you know yeah, and I, you know that's what they want like they you know these people they, they want a reaction whether it's positive or negative yeah it's a narcissistic thing yeah i try to be more conscious about not spending more energy on people than they're right. then they're returning basically and uh it's hard because i get so excited and i just enjoy talking to people and hearing their stories and stuff like that yeah. and then like an hour later i realized that i'm the only one who's been <laughs> listening and asking questions and it's not reciprocal so that but. definitely happens a lot in in not just random strangers but even people close in your life you find oh, totally. the certain people that you're you're the ear all the time mm. yeah mm. i'm noticing how many of my friends are like totally like totally asperger's <laughs> like wow it's true not bad it's just uh it's just something to manage you know yeah and i, I I'm, I'm kind of asperger -y, you know i just kind of like I like get excited about things and then, you know, but I'm just kind of in my own world and I don't know. But uh, yeah, well, I, like you were saying, like some people won't, won't return the energy you give them, but some people can't. That's and true. I understand that. I think part of it- But that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean that, you know, I shouldn't still rush my energy dealing with them, so. Right. It's, it's a hard thing, like managing your expectations and kind of like realizing like, okay, well, I'm never going to get what I want out of this person, but that's okay. That's just who they are. And, yeah. but I do get it out of this person over here. So, you know, you, you just kind of have to 
expect different things out of different people, I guess, and manage your own feelings on the matter. Because if you expect somebody to change, to no, make you, there is no yeah. changing. <laughs> it's never going to happen. Very rare. Yeah, that's sad. Yeah. So I, I like talking about like spooky, supernatural type stuff. Spooky, supernatural type stuff. Cool. So do you have any um, outstanding experiences that like that you've had or somebody, you know, close to you has had that stick out that Ooh, you want to share? Example. You know, like you saw a ghost or, or something weird. You saw a UFO or, you know, anything <laughs> natural or weird. Like, do you have any kind of weird experiences like that with any kind of supernatural? <laughs> Um, okay well here's the thing so uh when i was in college um i used to think that i i used to think that i saw ghosts here and there but i what i came to believe was that i wasn't seeing ghosts i was seeing actual people but there was like uh what i was actually seeing was like a rip in time or like an alternate you know, string the theory universe. Like, yeah, like, uh, you know, like all universes are happening simultaneously at the same time. Yes, and, yes. you know, we can only perceive one at a time or maybe sure. two at a time, and, but there's millions. And so uh, what I came to believe about seeing people walking by and stuff like that was that uh, what I was actually seeing was a different time. I, t I totally, Mike and I talk about this stuff all the time. And that's why you see them in old timey clothes. <laughs> <laughs> No, I totally, I, 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 first of all, I'm sort of semi obsessed with this thought of al alternate dimensions and like dream. I'm super into dreams specifically, like mm -hmm. are we going someplace. Are we tapping into like, are we watching something in another dimension or, you know, I like, I'm obsessed kind of with this. Yeah. That's probably so one of my, fa my favorite sci-fi is, is time travel or any sort of alternate time reality. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I love it. Like I just even, you know, first of all, we don't have answers. So anything you, any theory that you come up with is just as valid as the next one. You know what I mean? So and I love, I love thinking about how in one, in one of the books I'm working on right now, this, this character, she sort of like is constantly creating new lines because she'll have a dream about something and then it becomes a new timeline oh, and so i'm super fascinated by that like you know what if like today when you're driving down the street you just right. you turn left instead of right like <laughs> that created a different right line but this one still exists you're just right. not anymore right you know i just i'm super fascinated by all that like yeah yeah all that all that is super fascinating it's true you have to tell me what that book is <laughs> done yet but um and in like in dreams like how do you i mean our brains are marvelous things so you know we can create things but what if you're actually going and hanging out at that place you've never seen before in your entire life that doesn't exist on this planet right you know because it's so like i don't know how i don't know if you have super detailed dreams or whatever but like my dreams are very movie like and so i'm like how does your brain create this place that is so fully formed in, and it's no place that i've ever seen right with people i've never known like right. what do you really do exist in these other places that is that is a theory that people throw around i love it i love yeah. it first of all i'm a huge fan of escapism so anything that I can like, my brain can go someplace else. I'm like, I'm down for that. Like, let's yeah. get out of here and go someplace else and live another life. And, you know, it's, that's fascinating to me. So yeah. but sometimes people think you're crazy when you talk about this stuff. It's like, no, this mm -hmm. everything's very black and white. We're meat, we're meat sacks. You, you, you're born, you die. That's it. <laughs> it's like, how boring. Like how depressing. Oh no, there's all sorts of magic, but yeah that's just so depressing to me to think like really that's it like i just there's you know 
I've experienced too many weird things to say there's not something. I don't pretend to understand it, but right. I, I love it. I think it's fascinating. And I love, like, uh, Mike and I, like, we watch Ancient Aliens and, like, we're super <laughs> into all that stuff. And, yeah. um, like, we got the Gaia channel. I don't know if you know Gaia, but they have, like, all these shows on there kind of, like, along the same lines as Ancient Aliens where they, you know, like, ancient civilizations, prehistoric civilizations and, like, right. all this stuff. And it's just... It, on the surface, when you first start watching it, you're like, this is fucking crazy. Like, there's, you know what I mean? And then you start watching it and you're like, if you, if you let your guard down to think of possibilities, like maybe it's not crazy. You know? <laughs> like maybe there are great aliens that have been here for billions of years. I mean, who knows? I, I, I love all of that stuff though. Yeah, it's cool. Like you were talking about dreams. I remember there was a, there was an episode of Star Trek where they came across a planet where everybody's natural state was being asleep. Oh. And they all, and they all appeared in each other's dreams. And so when they, when they, so like, the, the, and they showed like the planet, like everybody was just lying there. Right. And that they would like be awake for eight hours a day. And that would be like their sleep when they weren't. Oh. Inter interacting with other people. And I, you know, and I just watched this and I was just like this could have been an entire movie this entire premise was just crazy because they were like interacting with the star trek ship and of course everybody in their dreams they started seeing these aliens and they're like what's going on and they were being captured and stuff like that. so they had to like do this whole thing but i was just like that premise alone is like an entire book you know yes and like fascinating and, and kind of who wouldn't want to live that life <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, in your sleep, you're you're doing your regular daily stuff. So yeah, yeah that's kind of lame. <laughs> but it's just you know, when you consider how we, you know, walk around during the day, it's not. It's I don't know. It's a natural, you know, extension of like somebody had a really good idea there. That would have been a great alternate yeah. universe. Well, it's sort of like the Matrix, I guess. Like you know. I, I oh, was, right. <laughs> I was talking about that to my son. He hasn't seen The Matrix yet. He's still, you know, he's 10. But right. um, the whole thought of if you could plug into like a dream, like if you could pick it, like maybe. Well, it's happening now. It's the metaverse. Yeah. Yeah. Like, would you choose to stay awake or would you just go, oh, no, I want to go be in that place? Right. You know, that would be the. Well, why would why wouldn't you because everything's perfect and you know, i mean you can make it so everything's perfect so why wouldn't you yeah i wonder how long it would i guess it, it would just be like how long would it be till you get sick of everything being perfect oh well, yeah that's the thing you'd have to throw in some conflict <laughs> which is interesting that's what they said in the matrix it's like they made everything perfect and everybody hated it so they had yeah. to make it like, <laughs> well, just like, kind of like whenever you read a good book or you watch a good movie it's like there's happy stuff and then drama happens Right. And it has a resolution, sometimes good, sometimes bad. But like, you know, so you'd have to, you couldn't make everything perfect. It's kind of like the thing with like AI, like right. um, if, you know, because a lot of this stuff is where, you know, they're creating AI to mimic human beings. And like, right. let's say you're a, a single person and you're like, I'm going to get an AI girlfriend or an AI boyfriend. You wouldn't want them to be perfect because how freaking boring would that be? <laughs> Exactly. Right? Like they would have to argue with you sometimes, I would think. <laughs> that would be pretty damn boring otherwise. They would have to not reciprocate the energy you sent to them sometimes because <laughs> <laughs> right? that would be boring. Like I feel like people would get abusive towards them like stop agreeing with me all the time because I don't like people who agree with me all on everything either. I'm like what is wrong with you that you agree on everything? Yeah, but, it's interesting that they, they create AIs and then like after interacting with an AI for a while, it learns to be horrible <laughs> because yeah. you're horrible to it. That's, <laughs> that's great. That's great. Wait, did you watch Westworld? No. It, it's New one. Kind of, I saw. I saw some of them, but I didn't. I didn't watch the whole thing. No. Yeah. It's kind of um, you know. There's this whole like moral dilemma of, you know, like let's say you could go to the that world, and essentially they're very human like you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between one of them and a, and a human and like some people go there and they choose to like 
murder them. Like that's their fun is that they're going to go there and like rape and murder and all this stuff. Right. And then, how awful are you? Like, exactly. That's, that's your fantasy. But, um, ugh. But yeah, there, I mean, and like we're watching Raised by Wolves and, and stuff right now. And just the conflict between how the humans treat the AI and, the, 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 you know, some of them treat them with kindness and respect like they're humans. And then the other one's like, no, they're just a machine or whatever. I mean, I would clearly be on the side of treating them like a human being because I'm like empathetic to, you know, I get, we get sad when, we get a new couch. I feel bad for the old couch that I'm getting rid of. <laughs> you anthropomorphize it. <laughs> the kind of person that I am. Every time we, you know, we get a new car, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna miss, you know, stupid. But um, yeah, there's all this like moral. You just, I just wonder. That's one I of mean, the reasons I was thinking I'd never get a dog. It's because it's like I anthropomorphize it into. It's like, how can you leave it home all day? Don't you feel bad? <laughs> Yeah. That, it's like it, it is, doesn't know that this is the last time it'll ever see this person and you know how do you how do you do that you know it's hard oh, folks don't care <laughs> no I don't care, know. But like we have we have a dog and we had another dog and um you know they the other dog came first and then we got the second dog well they were like sisters and i mean they were constantly with each other everywhere and they bickered at each other, you know, just like you would your family or whatever. And then um, we had to put the, the, our, our dog to sleep. And um, Lily, this, this, it was awful. But Lily, the second one, she didn't eat nothing for like two weeks. She just laid around sad. Like she yeah. was clearly depressed. Right. Lost all this weight, like with mm -hmm. puke, you know, just, just yeah. awful. And there's no way to be like, oh, this is the last time you'll see right right they don't seems, know they don't know it just seems That's, weird it just seems weird to me i don't know i haven't had dogs so i don't know no, it is weird it is weird you know like you can't help but first of all they aren't humans they don't have emo like you said like they don't know right they're in the moment Right. They, you know then that's the thing too is like people are always like oh my dog you know towards the end of their life oh boy this got depressing like towards the, <laughs> towards the end of their life and stuff like they're not sitting around going i'm gonna die oh no like they don't they don't <laughs> no, they sit around like ow <laughs> yeah, like they don't sit around pondering their existence and like what's coming next they just yeah which is weird know. for us depressive like psychological types <laughs> like, right. think about this stuff all the time <laughs> like i've been thinking about this my entire life and making myself you know sit in the corner and cry i can distinctly remember being about seven years old or around there elementary school age and sitting in my closet in my room and i took a pencil and wrote my name in, like in the back of the closet thinking if i died nobody will ever know i existed but maybe they'll see my name there and i mean what the fuck i was like <laughs> I was like seven or eight years old and I'm like I was like following that like yeah exactly and then you were like what the fuck <laughs> I mean, yeah like it makes sense to us right I was like of course we've all written our name on a thing like that right we like the same thing of course it's just such a funny thing because I don't think most people go through life thinking like what do, why do I exist what happens if it all ends tomorrow and if people forget that I I mean you know yeah the term was. <laughs> I think there's just a small group of us that sit around. <laughs> I, I think it's larger than we think. I think it's a whole music scene. <laughs> yeah. I think we're all drawn to art in some fashion or another. Yeah. You know, making your mark and I don't know. I don't know. It's such a weird thing, but like just thinking about stuff like that as like a small child and like if my parents died, who will take care of me? <laughs> Go play with your dolls. Like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> what if they lose me at the mall? <laughs> I know. I think about shit like that. I can't not think about that, especially because you know how, like, there's so many people that come up missing and stuff. And I'm like, how about you're just a human being going about your day, 
someone fucking yeah. kidnaps you and the next thing you know you're like on the other side of the planet all alone being forced to like these are the things that i i think about yeah yeah <laughs> it's just like how did i even get to this age and that i'm here and doing this and not have been you know arrested or kidnapped <laughs> or abducted or yeah it's just by aliens or something you know aliens yeah well so we just went to sedona um a couple weeks ago yeah and you know they i don't know i don't know if you know anything about sedona but supposedly there's like these energy vortexes there and it's supposed to be like you know arizona's kind of known as like a spiritual kind of alien you know we had the Phoenix. Spot. <laughs> yeah so like we went to sedona hoping to like feel something you know yeah. just not not like a curiosity kind of like are we gonna mm -hmm. feel something when we're there yeah. And it was kind of hard because we were on a tour and so you're with some other people and like, you know, they're talking and like they're describing the history of the place and all this stuff. So you couldn't like really just be there and be in the moment. Oh, right, right. So I'm like, I told, tell him Mike today, I'm like, we need to go up there and just like rent a cabin or something where we can just go and like be in it and see if like you feel this kind of connection to like any you know because the desert is really weird and that it it feels old like it feels timeless because yeah. when you, when you're out in the desert you're like literally that rock has been sitting there for millions of years and nobody yes has. exactly when you're out in nature anywhere you're just like you yeah. know what this this tree don't care yeah and it, I, <laughs> this tree this tree has been here for since before i was born yeah i give a shit yeah this rock does not you know i mean it's like it's like time it's, it's, exist. that's why it's so grounding though because you're like sitting there and you're like spinning in your head like yeah all this stuff is happening and you know, this tree doesn't it doesn't care yeah it just it, and it, it, it just and it, is it, it, it's it, there and it's solid and it's gonna be there and it doesn't yeah you're before right before and after you it's yeah i find it, nature like that it's very grounding so the desert would be i like trees but the desert can be like that too yeah it's very i grew up in northeast ohio which was very wooded um very like lush and so moving out here it, it's it's like being on another planet it's like very much no i felt that way too i'm from i'm from here and now i was in california that's the desert yeah, yeah. it was it, it always seemed wrong to me the trees are always wrong the climate's wrong there's it's, no seasons it's, <laughs> it's like it's like being on another, it really is. It's like being on another yeah. planet. Yeah. Um, and I didn't realize I was so attached to this climate, but apparently I was, so. It's in your DNA, I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I wasn't even born here, but. That's interesting. It's, it's just, you just have this imprinting spot where you're just like, well, this is what's normal. Yeah. And uh, when you're not there, you you realize it's not normal, so. Yeah. It'll be a while to figure it out, but. That's cool. After, as soon as I came back here, I was like, oh. <laughs> like I went to the desert and I was like okay you know I'm busy doing things and then I come back here and I'm like this is not California for sure so that's cool interesting because I don't know that like every time I go back home I I'm more aware that I don't belong there really I don't think I belong here the desert like the sun and the desert like I, I love it here I think it's stunningly beautiful but like as far as who i am as a person this doesn't fit me because i'm not a sunshine and desert person right but when i go home i'm like i'm really not in sync with this place at all but i think it's more cultural because mm. every you know there's like a i don't know how to say it without it sounding really insulting it's just kind of more progressive i guess i'll say out right. here than, than there and so like i feel like a fish out of water uh-huh so i don't know where like i really don't know where i should be <laughs> it doesn't matter anyways i'm here but maybe the yeah, pacific west or something yeah I, probably yeah. that that definitely calls to me like you know oregon or washington or something like that but yeah you know, like legit, our house is going to be paid off next month. Oh my God. Congrats. Yeah. So we're here. <laughs> <laughs> we're here. 
Oh, you'll get full price if you sell it though. And now it's a great market. So <laughs> yeah, that's true too. But you know, I, I don't know. It's uh it's definitely like it, we always talk about like in retrospect, we probably should have just moved someplace completely different because he he lived here and I lived in Ohio. And then he moved up there because it was easier for touring being in Ohio instead of over here because everything's closer over there, you know, all the cities and stuff. Yeah. Um, and so we moved out there and then like 2001, we worked for a, a music distributor and, you know, like people quit buying CDs. So... Right one day we came to work and they called each person in like half the staff and they're like sorry you don't have a job anymore oh no <laughs> <laughs> so we decided like okay well now's the time to jump like if we're gonna go somewhere and we we liked it out here because he's from here and stuff so we moved out here at that point but in retrospect it's like we probably should have just gone someplace completely new you know and just kind of started yeah. but yeah, I definitely didn't think about it when we when we moved to San Francisco. I had never been to San Francisco. I'd never been to California. And he was like, wow. he wanted to go. And I was like, whatever, I move a lot. You know, I've always moved a lot. Um, and when we and we went and I didn't even think about it. Like I said, I didn't think about it. I was just like there. I'm like, OK, I moved again. It's cool. Let's start. Let's get ready. Let's do this thing. And we were like doing the whole thing. And in retrospect, you know, obviously, because I moved back here. Yeah, I was like, this, is, this isn't where I want to be. I wouldn't have moved here on my own and I wouldn't have thought of moving here. And I should, you know, we should have moved to LA to do the music and stuff like that. And I like LA, but, and I thought of moving there when I thought of moving back here as well, but it would have been just as expensive as San Francisco. And that's the whole point, San Francisco. Was yeah. So yeah. I came back here. Well, you. I mean, obviously you found your place. That Your place is awesome. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So do you have family over there? I do. That's, that's nice. Too. I do. I, we started here. We started in New York city and New Jersey. We also lived in New Jersey and yeah. Um, yeah. We just play here and, you know, Philadelphia is equidistant from me as New York city. So yeah. we have this and then, you know, we started playing here, we play in New York and play Philadelphia. We, you know, go up to Boston and then we go, you know, and then we just yeah. kept going further and further and further. <laughs> and then we were like going around the country. So um, it just went that way. That's cool. Um, yeah, I like it here. Uh, I'm the only other place I could think of. Like, I'm a big Anglophile, so I could end up there too, but we'll see. Yeah. Right we'll on. See. I'm super bummed. We never made it to Europe. We we went to, I mean, we went to Toronto and like we went to Mexico City and that's as far as we got out of the United States. Yeah. So that's always been kind of one of those things like, I want to play shows just so that I can go. And then, you know, it's like dawned on me like, <laughs> Well, you know, we can just go. We don't have to play a show. That's we, true. You could go to a show. We like could, you could go to one of those great festivals. There's tons of yeah, great festivals. Sure. Like, yeah. but everything's, I don't know if, I don't know if it's, I don't know if you think this way, but for me, everything is always like connected to the band. So it's like every opportunity that comes has to be like, you can't just go there on vacation. Like you'd have to go there for a job, like for work. You know what I mean? Right. Well, I mean, you, 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 I mean, you take that with you wherever you go. I mean, if you went to, you know, Leipzig or something like that, and you, yeah. you, you would go as Lycia attending whatever. I mean, people would know who you are and, you know, you could do some promo or something like that, even if you weren't playing, but or networking just, you know, to, if you went. But um, it would be interesting if you went over. Audiences are really different. Audiences are really different in Europe and the UK. That's what everybody says. And like, we, we get asked to go to Leipzig like every year. And, and I always tell the guy, I'm like, well, not this year, but don't quit, you know, <laughs> don't maybe, quit asking. Maybe one time we'll say yes and stuff. And, um, you know, like the next record year, next like, year, you could say, well, not this year, but Caroline can go. <laughs> yeah. For, yeah. We actually, we actually did Leipzig in 2000. Yeah. You should go. Yeah. If they're, I mean, I assume they're doing it this year. Yeah, I'm just, you know, once I get another another release out and, you know, I'm starting, I, like I said, I'm starting already just playing in England this year and then I'll yeah. go further and further out. That's how it happens. You know, one, as soon as you have one show, you're like, oh, well, I'm playing this show. And then they're yeah, like, oh, you're playing here. Okay, so we'll book you, so. Right on. Yeah. Like, and the record label we work with is in is in Italy. And I'm like, yeah, we should just go over there to the record label and hang out with them, like just as an excuse to go, <laughs> just an excuse to go to Italy, you know? You should. Uh, yeah. I went over, I went over because um, 
because James, the bass player for The Wake, was his his new band, October Burns Black, was playing. And I was like, oh, I'm going to come over and see you play because I want to go to Whitby. I haven't been there in ages. And I just went and I attended. And, you know, they played, which was awesome. You know what? You know, the best part of going to other people's shows is you don't have to play them. Yeah. <laughs> it was the best. I just sit there with a drink and be like, yeah, James, you're doing great. You look good. I think you might have stumbled <laughs> onto something here. And I was still talking yeah. to people. Like, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, maybe I'll come over next year, blah, blah, blah. And you just, you know, you just kind of talk to people and stuff like that. And I went back, I went back last year, last Halloween as well. And just talked to a whole bunch of people and just like saw a bunch of bands and stuff like that. Great. Just traveling around. And then, you know, it ramps up to playing shows, you know, so you, you see where you want to play. <laughs> Do it. It's so easy. It's so cheap. It's so fun. You don't have to play. That's the best thing. You can just hang out and drink and see people <laughs> and be led around. People take you out, whatever. Hmm. Yeah, it's a good way to start. I mean, just think of it like a starting and then, you know, you go play later. Yeah. Hmm. I always feel like I need to earn my keep. You know what I'm saying? Like, while you're here, yeah. you gotta. Yeah. Well, when I went over with October Burns Black, I was like, I'd be happy to sell your merch or, you know, help you out or carry a thing or whatever. And I did, you know, carry a thing here and there. So, you know, I was helping out. Right on. Can it, does moral support count? Sure. <laughs> You know, you know, you know, you know how any hands, you know, carrying stuff is helpful. So true. true. And the thing was, you know, and really I was like, I was like an influencer. I was totally posting all their pictures and being like, come see this band and I'm going to see this band. And, you know, I was posting about them and, you know, helping them promo. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I've become, but I'm such a hermit though. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned them for the second time. Soft kills actually in Phoenix tonight, and I'm like, oh, like I wanted to go, but then I'm like, yeah, but then I have to like leave the house. <laughs> yes, so the, the overcoming over, overcoming the inertia of, of getting up is yeah. is a thing for sure. You know, and like we have a ten year old, so it's like I can't take him to the bar with me, like you know. Right. right. But um, but a few more years, I, mean, I would maybe. if I could, but. <laughs> A few more years and you might be ready to get out yeah. there and yeah. see who's out there and see what's going on. I'm just socially awkward. So like everything we sounds know. like a good idea. <laughs> like it's all like, yeah, I want to go do that. I want to do, do that. And then the closer it gets, I start getting more and more nervous and like more and more it's like sick to my stomach about it. Yeah. But this could That's be like social anxiety for sure. Yeah, like it could be, it doesn't have to be anything, even a big deal. If like my friend's like, hey, let's go get coffee this week. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds awesome. And then- <laughs> the But no, I made like, those plans when I was young and full of hope. <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> like, funny, um, I no longer feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> we're good friends with Brett um, from Audra and his wife. And, yeah. and we, we have this understanding where like, well, we haven't done this much since COVID started, but we used to go and have dinner, like usually like once a month or whatever. Right. But we always had the understanding that we have this plan, but we all reserve the right to say, I don't feel good today. And there's no <laughs> hard feelings about it. It's just, you know, I'm having that day today. I'm just not feeling it. No offense to you. It has nothing to do with you. It's nice to have friends that understand that. And they're like, yes. no, I get it. It's not about me. It's about you're not having a good day. It's cool. <laughs> this goes back to our conversation about our friends with Asperger's who that's yeah. just, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's true. You got to understand where people are coming from. And cause I have had friends be like, like talk shit behind your back. Like she never goes anywhere, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, I have like anxiety, dick. <laughs> like, yeah. Social anxiety, it's yeah. It's that old, you know, people aren't taking those, those mental uh, neuroses on their face value. So. Yeah, it's not, a, it's not like, I, I'm not doing it to be cute. <laughs> right? Or dick. Yeah. Particularly. I'm managing my mood disorder. Thank you. Yes. Without <laughs> full time job. It can be it some can days. Be especially at this age where hormones are starting to do weird things and you know, ladies of a certain age yes bodies are like not acting <laughs> like they're supposed to and yes that's a mental mind fuck all by itself too like what why is my back sore i didn't even do anything 
is it hot in here? <laughs> Seriously, yep. why am I suddenly having a panic attack for no reason? I don't know. It's so weird. Yep. It is. It's uh, reverse puberty. <sighs> yeah, it's worse to me. I feel like it's way worse. I don't remember having, I mean, maybe it's all rosy in hindsight, but I don't remember having like that bad of a deal going, becoming a woman. Yeah, well, we were busy running around and being crazy. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Now, now you're sitting around worrying about your impending death. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm like, I hate doing, I, I start doing, cause my kid's only 10. So I'm always right. doing math in my head when he's this age, I'll be this age. And I'm like, oh my God, like, don't, 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 don't. It starts getting freaky. Uh, yeah. People are always posting like, oh, I turned 37 next week. You know, people think like time stops there. I'm like, you're going to wish you were 37 in 10 years. <laughs> yeah. You know, perspective. Yeah, it's crazy. You know what, though? I remember, I remember distinctly remember when I turned 30 and, and one of my coworkers is like, oh, you're still so young. And I'm like, this is the oldest I've ever been. It's all perspective. Like it was old to me. I'd never been 30 before. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Oh, to be 30. <laughs> it's the first time for all of us. Every year is the first time for all of yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I try not to downgrade anybody's feelings on anything. Like, just because it doesn't happen. You know, you know, like, I guess that's how we should all be. Like, stop, stop making somebody feel bad that they're freaked out that they're 30 just because you're 40. <laughs> like, <laughs> they're allowed to be freaked out, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Life, man. Life, man. It's true. <laughs> it's very true. Oy vey. Oy vey. <laughs> what do, you, do you have st anything else you want to talk about? Or are you just out of your mind bored? Or <laughs> <laughs> No, it's fun to catch up. This is weird. Let's see. I think we covered everything. We covered ghosts and creativeness, sewing and... Uh eating disorders and uh yeah is there anything else you wanted to talk about no i mean this is just this is my life this is how we <laughs> this is our up. life <laughs> whatever comes up comes up man this is how it goes tara this is my I, life I, I watched a good episode of ghost adventures right before this that was pretty good oh my god so i was doing um I was doing a tour in uh, 2019, just before the pandemic. And uh, I was working with uh, Dave from the Dramedy. Mm -hmm. And we were staying, we stayed at this like hotel, like Best Western or something like that. And we were, you know, it's just like woke up the next morning, makeup everywhere and hair everywhere, the whole thing. And we went down, <laughs> we went down to breakfast and um, there were some people at the breakfast and they were like, you guys look familiar. I was like, oh, really? And they were like, yeah, are you on that? you on that paranormal show? <laughs> they thought we were like hosts of a paranormal show. You're like, why, yes. Yes, I am. <laughs> That's me. <Ooh. laughs> <Hold on. laughs> well, oh, but I was 200 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> what can you say to make a freak out? I love all that crap. Oh, my God. Good times. It is good. Touring. And that's why I enjoy touring. <laughs> yeah. I, Mike used to get some funny, like uh, one time somebody said, you look like Michael Bolton. We laughed about that for a long time. What? <laughs> I don't wow. quite understand how they right. arrived at that conclusion, but that was wow. funny. the funny thing. is, This is such a random story. That same it was a hotel, probably a Motel 6 is probably what it was. Right, because that's that's where we stand. Yeah. The lady checking him out is like the person that tells him this. Anyways, he comes out and we're I getting ready. And I look over and I'm like, oh my God, that's Frank. Like, do you remember that singer Frank, a female singer, um, Frank? P is P-H-R-A-N-C. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Frank. She's like right there. I'm like, this is an interesting, random sighting. <laughs> right? In the middle. And it was like someplace like, you know, 
St. Louis or some like weird random place that you wouldn't, how right. I even connected the dots that that's who that was, was remarkable. But right. I, that, that's another fun thing about touring is it's like random right. sightings of people that you're like, this is so out of context right now. Yeah. Seeing people from that you know from one city and another city used to just, just to blow yeah. my mind. Like people like, hey, you're not in Chicago. What are you doing here? <laughs> just one of those alt dimensions or what? <laughs> yeah, it's like this is LA. What day is it? Where am I? <laughs> That's true. Uh, I think Charlie got it got uh mistaken for um Al Jorgensen once. He was at a concert. We were at a concert. He was wearing his hat. He also had a cowboy hat. And this yeah. guy came up to him and is like, are you Al Jorgensen? <laughs> he right. was like, sure. Like, no, I'm Andrew Eldridge. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, Get away. Um, yes. And then uh, one time I was at the uh, House of Blues in Las Vegas or something like that. And the band that was playing that night was him. It was that band. And I was like in the gift shop. I wasn't even going to the show. I was just in the gift shop because I wanted to see the gift shop. <laughs> and this kid comes up to me and is like, are you in the band? And I was like, what band? <laughs> they're like, him. I was like, oh, are they playing tonight? Is that what's going on here? That's funny. But You're like, I, yes, I am in a band, as a matter of fact. In a band. I'm not it, in that band. Nor would I be in that band. <laughs> <laughs> so good times. Yeah. <sighs> all right it's a, high note. it's a high note we can go out on that yeah that's fun yeah. i don't think i ever got i've never been mistaken for anybody that i can recall yeah mm. good <laughs> good for you <laughs> yeah. i don't get recognized either so <laughs> oh sure you do <sighs> no all right my sweet friend it was nice. nice. Thank you for uh, letting us see your awesome church. I to work on some music right now. Yeah, that's awesome. Send Good me time. any links that you want me to share. Oh, okay. And I'll put them in the, the video and I'll send you the links and tag you on them and all that good stuff. Great. And I will talk to you again soon. It's been nice talking to you this evening. So nice catching up. Thanks for asking me to do this. Yeah, it's fun. Yep. Bye. Bye.